Hi, and welcome to the Thinking Out Loud podcast. A show, Masha helped me out with this, you know, because <laughs> I, forgot, the... I, I forgot the formula. Meaningful conversations in English with non-native speakers. Non-native speakers, exactly. Non-native speakers like ourselves. Uh, guys, uh, thanks for being with us. We are starting season six. And uh, by the way, my name is Jendrek. My name is Masha. All right, everything is everything's there, I guess. All the elements, even if they yeah. are not presented as smoothly as as they uh, used to be, been, as they used to be, exactly. But uh, we are coming back after a month's break, and uh, off the record, we've already uh, complained about the state of our English. What's happening, Masha? I mean, uh, we are using "you know" all the time. Because we are uh, <laughs> different crutches, know. yeah. You know, you yeah. know. So that's what yeah. happens after a month of inactivity. Well, I wouldn't call it inactivity exactly, but yeah, you know, when it, you exactly. when you speak to students mostly, you try and um, well, I don't, I wouldn't say that I grade my language heavily, but of course, you wouldn't show off, you know. Like I would do with, you know, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, with, you know, with, you know, the with guys. The native, <laughs> uh, with you even, yeah. So Also, uh, and I, I told you in the past uh, that recording this podcast helped me a lot uh, linguistically, <laughs> honestly. Like I know it's, it's meant for our students and uh, of course we are teachers. So, uh, you know, we shouldn't be exposing our... We, wait, wait, wait. Should we be exposing our flaws? I mean, wait a second. It also makes us kind of uh, human beings, right? I mean, uh, I never said anywhere that, you know, that I'm perfect. Uh, as a teacher, but, I. But, you know, I, I, people I, expect you to be pretty decent. People, you know, yeah, 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 I, exactly. People expect me to be definitely competent, you know, mm -hmm. and, and able to, uh, you know, provide. Uh, not only feedback, but uh, but also certain uh, model, right? To copy. By the way, I don't know if uh, <laughs> if your model idea, is but... copyable. <laughs> no, but I I feel okay with my language. But I'm uh, like I uh, told you before. Sorry, guys. You know, off the record because we had a conversation before, and now uh, we need to um, update you on certain things. But uh, I told you that listening to various podcasts in English, of course, with uh, natives, obviously, or actually, I don't know if if uh, Doctor Saad, uh, the one I told you about, well, sounds native, like he's from Lebanon. Yeah, from Lebanon. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you know, it's it's always makes me, uh, you know, envy them. You know, their skills. Like, oh, I wish I I had this sort of flow. And I guess our students may feel the same. Do you have uh, the flow in your own mother tongue? That's a very good question, you know. Am I... Uh, wait, is that flow uh, equivalent to being talkative? What did you mean by flow, the flow you envy? Because, you know, um, there, were, uh, there was a guest on a show and he was talking a lot. I mean, uh, he's written a book recently. So yeah, but you liked the would... way he talked, right? I liked, and it's not like I liked, I envied, but it's okay. not, it doesn't mean that I liked it because, you know, I just envied this sort of flow, this sort of... But how uh... can you envy something you don't like? Now you can. Ah, oh, it's a very good question, you know? So it's some psychological trick. Of course you can do that. Of For course example. you can envy. Well, that's that's what it is, you know? I, 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 I would like to be, I don't know, uh, um, such a blubber... You know, such such. Uh, uh, I don't know. Um, okay, maybe not blabber, I'm, I'm, but I'm, you <laughs> envied his choice of phrases, his choice yeah, of language. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you I, like exactly, his choice of language. I liked it. I liked. It. I think it was so. precise. I think it was it was uh, super competent. You know, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's not uh, who I'd like to be. You know, this kind of. Uh, Would like to be able to talk like that. I'd like to be able to choose such phrases, but I wouldn't like to be so, how to say that, uh, aggressive in, in a conversation almost like, you know, because he was dominating uh, the the uh, interviewer, you know. Mm. 
Okay. So so I envy uh, the skill of picking the right phrases at the right time, but I don't envy the whole attitude, and perhaps also uh, you know the 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 content. I mean you know you know you know. Okay, we got a little bit sidetracked. What was the point exactly? <laughs> yeah, sorry, the point of what? Of recording this podcast? Or no, the no, no, of... no. The point of mentioning ah, the flow. The, I, okay, I asked you about the flow in your own language. Do you choose oh, yeah, phrases right. the way you, you know, the way this guy uh, did it? It's very, it's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting question. I'm not aware of my L1 skills, I think. You know, when I speak, I just speak. And am I competent? Uh, it's a very good question. No, I need to observe myself, uh, maybe, or record myself. But uh, I think it's also not so easy in the first language. You know, it's not, of course. It's not. It's not. I mean, uh, to speak eloquently, to speak um, fluently in your first language, it's not so easy. Yeah, and speak about what you know. I I've noticed that. Um... I don't want to use the word profound, but let's say deeper conversations happen, mm -hmm. in my case, happen in English, you know, because I leave I my see. mother tongue for, you know, I communicate with my family and we don't e discuss exactly. the difference between. Yeah, 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 between, you know, like, a hero and an idol. The milk is sour. Have yeah. you done your homework? <laughs> <laughs> this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The this toilet is, is building you know, an is argument, broken, you know. You know? <laughs> Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, uh, I I do have some evening conversations with my wife, you know, and we talk about well various things. You know, it's it's, it's an evening conversation, so uh, this is maybe a bit deeper than just you know, hey, uh, uh, will you have time to pick up the boy because you know I'm blah blah. And so this functional language uh, that we use during the day may be replaced by something more profound in the evening, but. But then again, uh, this is also beer time. So, you know, it's <laughs> like... This time your language skills improve. usually improve. <laughs> I, I don't know if beer actually improves. I think that certain amount of beer improves the flow, mm -hmm. maybe. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It's, it, I think these are great questions for science, you know. These are great questions for science. I mean, with the impact of alcohol on fluency, but not only in the foreign language, but in your first language, you know, and maybe uh, what is even more important, the impact on the eloquence. But here, I'm not sure, you know, because in the first language, very often we use a lot of, um, oh, let's say that, uh, if you know someone very well, you don't need to, so finish explicit. your sentence yeah. yeah you need to finish your sentence exactly <laughs> because the person knows what you yeah. are going to say yeah, or what yeah. you mean yeah and i think that it uh and it also you know doesn't require from you this you know precision that would normally be required so you've never given talks in polish no i've never given talks in polish like unless unless uh if there is the the feedback section uh, in in my classes and I switch to Polish, right, during the feedback. And then let's say I uh, say a few words about language, about how it's learned or, you know, about, you know, the mechanics and so on. But then again, it's, it, it doesn't count as a speech, right? Because how long could that be? Like five minutes, maybe 10 minutes maximum if if I, or, or um, yeah, something like that, you know. Or mm -hmm. if I talk about myself, like, you know, uh, my way of teaching, you know, and my method, usually during the, the first meeting, right? So there's like an extended, not only feedback, but also some sort of, you know, uh, presenting of, of my method, my methodology and everything. Okay, so imagine you are a person who listens. To, this is the first episode of this podcast. What's going on here? So you said your name is Yendrik, my name is Masha. So we are two English teachers who... Yeah, who and this is what we usually do. We try to finish this line. Um, yeah, and so we, what do we and, do these days? What do we do these days? Well, we are first of all, I think we are recovering recording. after a summer break. <laughs> yeah, recovering after summer break, recovering after uh, a lot of things. <laughs> but uh, I guess we are recording a conversation that is spontaneous. 
that isn't scripted. So we don't know where it's going to take us. And it's not because we're lazy. We do it on purpose. Yeah. Like uh, I, I, I you, sometimes I try, you know, before the recording to, mm, Yendrik, maybe we should prepare. And you're like, nah, no, that's not what we do. Uh, yeah, it's not what we do, but um, I'm not sure if it's because uh, we want it to be natural or simply because we're lazy. I guess we are kind of combining these two. I am lazy in the sense that I'm not never been good at preparing and then you know executing. I'm more into improvising and 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 I guess this is yeah but lazy not in a way like for example uh, there is you know when you teach um, I want to say properly <laughs> there is a question there's a huge question whether to pre-teach uh, vocabulary it's called blocking vocab mm -hmm. uh, so and please the... explain to please explain to uh, the non-teachers what is what is uh, pre-teaching vocab well, you know, when you learn in a classroom, you are in this um, artificial environment where you don't, the teacher doesn't want to push you too hard so that you don't lose motivation at the same time. So you are maybe, you know, your level in the, a little bit higher. So if you're going mm -hmm. to teach, the students are going to listen or read something and they need to get, okay, they need to feel comfortable. So mm -hmm. you, you, you give them a list of Study words. the text. No, no, don't yeah, give beforehand. the list. No. That's not how it works. Sorry. You no, that's how, pre -teach. That's how, how far away from <laughs> traditional methods I am. So basically, yes, you choose the words which might, it's called blocking uh, because you don't pre-teach everything they don't know. You pre-teach only something that will block them basically from understand from doing mm -hmm. the task, whatever mm -hmm, this task mm -hmm. is. All right, all right, all right. And and uh, of so course... like it's so so honestly it it, it comes down to the uh, most difficult vocabulary items or the most critical most critical yeah for all right that will basically you know prevent you from uh, doing the task you will feel miserable like I don't understand anything it's, it was the last class and um, but but you know in real life nobody pre teaches anything. And yeah. you have to figure it out on your own. So, of course, teachers, uh, well, not all teachers, but teachers who pay some, give it some thought, you know, they fall into two camps, whether pre-teach or not pre-teach. So, again, the same, you can say you're lazy, you don't want to do, because it's a separate activity. You want to think yeah. it through, you yeah, want yeah, to yeah, present yeah. it, yeah, and yeah. blah, blah. Uh and if you don't do it, the, of course, the first maybe impression is that you're lazy. And um, maybe you are in a way, but you do it because you have certain beliefs, you know, and yeah, you think that it will benefit exactly you. Exactly. I'm lazy because I have certain <laughs> beliefs. <Yeah. laughs> okay. <laughs> I believe so being lazy is good. Yeah. But, ah, okay. Uh, Coming back to, uh, I know we have a, a group of faithful mm -hmm. listeners and they don't oh, need any explanation, 37. but in case, yeah, exactly. But in case, in case uh, there are uh, new people, of course, coming, listening, uh, this is a show where we record conversations. Uh, right now, it's just the two of us, but normally, normally right now, we have a guest, right? And mm -hmm. I guess we'll start. We'll start having guests uh, from the next episode on. And, uh, and who can be our guest? Uh, chosen well, ones? Theoretically, anyone. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I guess uh, since uh, the beginning of season five or somewhere around there, we've narrowed uh, down the group of our guests to the non-natives, right? Well, it doesn't mean it... that if you're a native and you knock on our door, we will say no. Yeah, of course, of <laughs> course. I mean, you know, uh, but but uh, we find these conversations a bit more interesting, uh, and um, I would say Masha inspiring too, because you know we have people who, after all, went through the process of learning mm -hmm. the second language, and now they are capitalizing on their skills you know they they use what what they learned you know and uh both us and our listeners they can 
uh, sort of, uh, you know, listen and and uh, get inspired, you know, by... Well, yeah, first of all, get inspired. And for me personally, I find the conversations with non-natives more interesting because, you know, once you eliminate this linguistic difficulty, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's kind of more to what do you know about the subject and you deliver yeah, your... Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but exactly. with a, with non-natives, you, you, there is a challenge. You know, you struggle with the question. Maybe yes, maybe no. And then you struggle linguistically, which makes it you more. You have to be more. You know, kind of creative with your language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess it also translates on the overall uh, atmosphere because uh, once again, we we highlight this every every time we meet. We are not experts in any domain especially the ones we are talking about like you know we talk about sometimes i know uh bravery sometimes about shyness sometimes about you know various concepts that basically uh, are words from a dictionary right because you know the dictionary is full of full of words full of concepts but then again we are not experts but uh, the whole point is to basically have a meaningful conversation right but not from the position of an expert but and why why do you think say... it's interesting? Because all other shows they do quite the contrary. They invite experts yeah. to different. Yeah, yeah. yeah so exactly. Why do you think it's interesting to listen to non-experts? I think it's interesting because uh, you know this is a pure uh, pure improvisation. You know, on both sides, our side and our guests, right? And we are trying to. Uh, it's like it's like you know, uh, starting to paint uh, from an empty canvas you know you have an empty canvas in front of you and you start the painting and it's the same here i mean you, you start from scratch from zero mm -hmm. and then uh you it's not like you come here with a uh, certain you know uh uh preconcepts you know with certain things that we basically you know first of all our guests never know the questions beforehand so they're always surprised like <laughs> you know <laughs> let's and uh, I like to recreate this, uh, you know, element of surprise in my classroom, in this show, everywhere, because uh, even though the conversations are not really what you do in your daily life, right? Mm -hmm. like we mentioned this, you know, the functional language is what, what you use, right? I mean, even if our, in our first language, right? This is what we do. But, but um, I like to recreate this element of surprise because this is uh, common to uh, all um use of foreign languages right you're always you're constantly surprised constantly even if someone asks you uh uh what time is it right it's like whoa you know i need to remember how to say that you know i need to deal with uh this you know and here we are basically surprising our guests with our questions with our specific questions but they are i venture to say good questions <laughs> you know interesting questions and then uh, and then it starts the whole thing, you know, the conversation, the uh, this kind of uh, thinking and speaking at the same time. So that's why it's called uh, thinking out loud. And for me, it's also, you know, this non-expertness thing. It's, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's different level of, I would call it participation, because when I listen to a podcast with an expert, I just listen. And, you know, sometimes I'm in awe. I don't think that my own, you know, considerations, thoughts, even, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. matter. Because who am mm -hmm. I? And this is an expert. And I exactly. just listen. Exactly. But here, we talk about things everybody knows something about. So they, I would, you know, probably tune in. I would think along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I'm also just an ordinary person, just like the host, like the guest. And uh, what I think also some maybe valid you know it's uh yeah yeah i would say that that's why this show is more interactive in a way mm -hmm. that uh that it uh, actually invites people to think along yeah and not people just, can you know receive uh not to just yeah. receive the you knowledge but like people you know we we are bringing you the knowledge now now uh please take it and, and digest it it's yeah. not what we want we want to uh we are actually building knowledge if i may say so mm -hmm. uh modestly right uh we are building knowledge modestly. here yeah yeah i mean i mean yeah we are doing it because you know after i mean 
we we start from certain assumptions that okay we are uh adult more or less intelligent people right modestly and, <laughs> yeah and 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 uh, hopefully we're able to say something meaningful right we have of course uh certain experiences you know um in our heads of course and and you know and and all of this together um I, I think that uh, comes down to uh, a, a pretty uh, interesting result. You know, the conversation that is live. Yeah, at that least is, you know, 37 people think so. Yeah, 37 for now. Oh, loyal. For, yeah, <laughs> loyal. What is that 30? What is this number 37 uh, people? Because uh, I've been checking the stats for our show uh, in August. And even though there were no new episodes recorded, uh, our audience size for the past seven days, this is what uh, Spotify for podcasters, the, the platform uh, we are at, is telling us uh, our audience size was always around 37, 33, 35, 37. So, so uh, basically, we assume that uh, these people are uh, the ones who uh, listened to our previous episodes. Even without like, you know, getting notifications. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so yeah, that's, that's true. You know, that's true. All right, great. And so far, we've got uh, 105 uh, Spotify subscribers. Uh, I'm not sure about the YouTube, our YouTube channel, because we are also on YouTube. And uh, I need to check it out, you know. <laughs> Wake up from the slumber. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so um, that is more or less what our show is about. I think, Masha, there was a separate episode on uh, how we design the questions and and um, we generally talk a lot about, you know, what is this show about? Because it needs to be uh, rephrased, you know, every time we meet. But uh, what about? Um, <clears throat> wait a second. We went. Uh, we went uh, with this fluency. Oh, we are also English teachers here. We're not only podcasters. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, I guess <laughs> it's, uh, we are. We are not yet full time podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> yes we're just, full time uh, english down. teachers yeah but i think you know what i think the podcast adds uh something special to us uh because uh if some people visit our website by the way it's studiomentals.com um if some people visit our website uh there are there are countless websites like ours i'm sorry to say that you know we are not unique i mean websites in general are pretty much the same if you visit a language school and you know uh, they offer you what language courses right and they always boast how like how great they are and what sort of methodology they have you know and they, then there are some testimonials like oh yeah you know there's great teachers and so on so basically our website is pretty much like this but uh this podcast is uh i guess uh, adding something some depth because uh, people can listen. Uh, there have been whatever uh, around sixty episodes. So uh, basically, it's not like you know we are people from nowhere, right? We have been there, you know. And actually, and... what well, if you listen to the podcast, you know exactly what will happen in the class. Yeah, pretty much. To... Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Our classes uh, are the, uh, basically look or or sound <laughs> the same, like. Uh, like only classes, only because... students get feedback on their language because yeah exactly it's, it's an exactly. English class <laughs> exactly Marcus. so there's there's feedback at the end which we don't do in the show plus um, there might be some you know minor differences like I'm also using some quizzes you know uh, in between yeah. the questions and perhaps during the classes uh, I'm asking more questions you know because we usually ask like one or two questions here mm -hmm. in the show. But in my classes, I'm able to ask three up to four, yeah, up to, up to four questions, yeah. So, so it depends basically, you know, on on how well the conversation is going. I mean, how much uh, some people are able to explore certain concepts and so on. But it's pretty much uh, the show uh, that you are listening uh, to. Uh, the thinking out loud is pretty much what we are doing uh, in our classes that we teach. All so right. you don't so, buy, uh, you know, what is the English a cat in the bag? Cat in the bag, I guess, yeah. 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 Because when you so sign up for a course. for a course, you know, you pay up front for I don't know, three months and 
What if something yeah. goes wrong? But it's, here, you, uh, know. you know, uh, it's 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 uh, maybe much a good uh, moment to talk <laughs> a little bit a little bit about uh, you know this avalanche of uh, language schools, language courses. Mm -hmm. uh, this year is special because uh, and, uh, sorry, it's all guys, about you know, AI. Yeah. Some, yeah, if I'm making some mental shortcuts, but uh, if you're on Instagram. Then uh, and if you are, uh, I don't, I don't know why I'm being attacked honestly uh, by uh, language school ads, you know. Because you probably expressed teacher. interest. Yeah, but how did That's... I do that? I mean, I'm following certain teachers for sure, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not even following schools so much. I guess I'm not. I'm 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 not following uh, any language school honestly, because there was a time in my life when when I was following a lot of them. But then the content was kind of you know repetitive, like the word of the day, the phrase of the day, uh, the whatever you know, and and I didn't like that, and so I stopped following language schools. But anyway, you know, I'm being right now, uh, I'm being right now uh, bombarded with uh, ads of language schools and different solutions, uh, materials, books, and so on. And this year is special because of uh, the AI schools that are fully 100% AI based. So uh, you can sign up and have not only uh, some grammar exercises, but also conversation classes with AI. And this is uh, this is uh, something new. I think there are like three or four companies, honestly, that, uh, that appear on my whatever uh, reels or what, I don't know what's the name for that, you know? But, you know, when you, uh, when you, yeah, well, yeah, on, on my yeah, exactly on on my field, my wall, whatever. But but there are three or four companies uh, that are exclusively AI based, mm -hmm. and uh, I must say honestly that I went through these offers. You know, I was reading them yeah, a bit. I tried and, one, I think, and they are not really attractive. I don't know why, but uh, they sound so cold. I mean, uh, the the thing is that they they promise cheap education. That's for sure, and I believe it can be cheap and still profitable for the owners, right? If you pay like one dollar per, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know even the pricing. I didn't go as far as as uh, clicking this. Perhaps it's not so interesting at the end of the day, but it's definitely uh, cheaper than having classes with certain, uh, you know, uh, living. You know, beings. human beings, yeah, <laughs> but, and 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 especially when it comes to you know this availability, this is also a thing. You know that you know I'm I'm already booked in the morning, so sorry uh, if someone wants to study with me in the morning, you have to either wait till uh, you know this this uh, time slot is liberated, or or basically you have study to study with take, AI. Oh, study with AI, exactly, mm -hmm. but. But you say that uh, the conversations were boring, but I think, you know, we already in one of our shows, we mm -hmm. explicitly, you know, paid tribute to the teachers who do this nitty gritty work, you know, mm -hmm. so the students mm -hmm. are able to have conversations. Yeah. And this work is done very well by AI, I must admit. Uh, have you tried? I mean, uh, have you tried some, I don't know, a grammar course or, or I don't know what, like the A1 basic? Uh, the, 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 I didn't uh, try you know, course, basic. but I, I didn't even need to try the course. I just went to, you know, chat GPT, nothing special. And I asked mm -hmm. it, can you please correct uh, mm -hmm. my language? And what it does, it uh, tells you where the mistake is and it tells you mm -hmm. what is wrong here. It, it explains the, the particular grammar and it, it, it's telling you this in your native language it can do it in your native language yes all right yeah that's fine but you know what what i think is uh, um, uh, a trap here is uh, that you know you are the captain of your education from the beginning to the end you know there was this questionnaire you had to fill out in one of these ai schools and you have to you had to answer the question like how often do you want to study you know and how much time do you want to devote to uh, you know uh, after class whatever you know learning and so on so you basically decide about you as a student as a client you decide about everything everything you know plus the area of your interests and so on and I think that being a captain like that okay if you're an advanced 
uh, let's say, language learner, meaning that you already speak I know, several languages, like two, three languages, and then you want to learn the fourth one, then you know what to do more or less in, uh, you know, with with language, you know, how to learn. And you may use, may perhaps, I don't know. Yes, uh, in this AI. case, you uh, chat GPT will be enough. But for beginners, they have very structured course. I haven't mm -hmm. tried it myself, but I I, th I don't see any reason why it cannot be um, good. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Because after all, yeah. it's just a it's just a course book. But you know, uh, so I think that what is good about it that right now, and again, if you are very um, independent learner, you know, because very few people, mm -hmm. for for yeah. a lot of people, it, it, yeah, it, yeah. it actually will be off putting. You know, this thing mm -hmm. that you are the mm -hmm. captain because they want to be told what to do. They want to teach a design a syllabus for them. Even if it, it sometimes they have to uh, do something which is basically not interesting for them, but they're fine with that. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, what I wanted to say about this. Uh, this uh, yeah, so the, right now, if you are an independent learner, mm -hmm. you can do um, a, a lot of work a lot of studying very cheaply, you know, mm -hmm. and only do them whatever what you right now, unfortunately, I must say, right now you cannot do with an AI. You need to do it with a human and pay a lot of money for this. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah for a student. You know, uh, for a student. For a student, yeah. And for for the teachers, I mean uh We'll see, you know, the impact of that. On, but the teachers on will, teaching. like I said, I think I said it off record before, uh, there are teachers who I would call just middlemen, you know. They still think mm -hmm. that their function is to transfer knowledge. Unfortunately, there is no future for, for this because AI can do it much better. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I'm glad we are not actually, trans, uh, uh, you know, transferring knowledge here because we are providing certain experience, you know. We are providing certain... out. You, you'll be laughing, but we, are provide, we are entertainers, but we are providing certain, uh, listen up, uh, spiritual experience. Oh, no, no, no. I don't subscribe to that. No, no. <laughs> no <laughs> Excuse me. I don't, I don't mean religious or anything like this, but, you know, I mean. I know. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, like, you know, you feel good after a good conversation. A good conversation can actually make you feel good. I don't know. It's uh, It touches, you know, the core of of uh whatever you know happiness or something and i i think i think uh a good conversation is able to uh improve your mood you know make you feel better yeah i about agree yourself, but about i would the world, call it spiritual your... experience well it's, it's 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 spiritual because it, because it's not tangible you know what i mean if, if that oh, was something okay. tangible yeah so in mm. this sense spiritual not not in that you know uh you know otherworldly or something but but it's not tangible. But and again, you feel good after. I mean, how many times, Masha? Honestly, have you personally felt good uh, after we recorded the conversation here with our guests? I mean, very often, you know, it's just like, wow, you know, this conversation was so good, uh, I, and and it feels. I mean, you feel good. I mean, yeah, all, a couple of times you made me do it on a weekend, and I was like, what the. But then yeah, I, but, after the conversation, wow. Yeah, and it's like 7 yeah, I don't like regret seven, a minute. Seven, yeah, 7 p.m., uh, you know, on Saturday. <laughs> I'm with my yeah. wine, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well-deserved glass of wine on yeah. night. And... But but I feel I feel like that. And I think that uh, although it's very hard and it would be weird, honestly, to, for example, uh, set up an Instagram ad saying that, you know, we provide uh certain you know spiritual experience, spiritual experience. <laughs> because no, no. it's so weird because it's so weird to talk about but in fact this is what's happening right i mean this is a language class it's uh you know uh english learning but at the same time and who knows if right now in you know this uh turbulent times of ai and so on this is not the major asset you know of of what we are doing providing certain spiritual experience of um having a good conversation 
you know. Yeah, it's and, very difficult to, to define to measure because after a, a normal, let's say, English class, you always have a takeaway value. You you make it clear to your students what have they. Yeah, you learn. Yeah, you learn how to ask for direct. They feel like it's are... money well spent, you know. But when yeah. you say, mm -hmm, yeah. "Oh, you you had some very good spiritual experience today. Thank you. See you tomorrow." It's very difficult to put a price tag on it. You know. <laughs> it's it's yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, it's it's very difficult to uh, put a price tag on this. But at the same time, judging by how people feel about it and uh, uh, how how loyal they are, mm -hmm. I think I, I think people uh, feel it. You know, even if they are not aware of it, but they feel they need it. You know. Mm -hmm. they 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 need uh this sort of experience you know and uh not to mention it's it's awfully beneficial for language i i, I believe you know this is the way to learn language because i always say that the much that you know language doesn't come from your uh cortex it comes from your spinal cord it means that you know these that's are the back door of... another you you found <laughs> a better <laughs> finally yeah. no no but I, you know I mean that I mean that you know the phrases and I mean uh, even though you may have uh, knowledge about how to build the language, how to you know and and you may uh, even know the proper vocabulary and so on, but at the end of the day, during fast speech, language comes out from your spinal cord. These are certain reflexes, and that's all. Do you have I mean, science you... to back it up, mm... or is it your? <laughs> It is my it is my my uh, feeling I must say, but I bet there is science for that because uh, because you know uh, you, you know about uh, fossilized mistakes right I mean some people will keep making mistakes mm -hmm. in the same places you know in language even though they know the correct form so if you ask them like you know uh, to to repeat this or say it slowly or consciously mm -hmm. focused yeah. They, yeah, they, 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 they'll do it uh, correctly, 100% correctly. But then in the fast speech, uh, again, you know, this is the post, and that's and this is a proof, a very tangible proof of the fact that language comes from the spinal cord. So from the place which you don't really control, it's like breathing, like, like you know, like like all the things that happen almost automatically, you know. Sounds a bit far fetched. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a good. No, but... no, no, no. You know, today, uh, for example, for, <laughs> just to give, just to put it into context, what I'm about to say. You know, I saw an ad uh, recently that okay, you have this problem with your, mm, let's call it okay, with your gut, and usually what people do is they, you know, eat healthily, take probiotics, whatever. But these guys, they say that you have uh, some kind of nerve which is always, uh, you know agitated so we treat it with hypnotherapy so that's what we can mm -hmm. do you know learn english through spinal cord <laughs> it's so <Yeah. laughs> no i but but what i wanted to say is you know all i wanted to say is that uh, you need to use language and you need to listen to the language it's like you know this is this this loop you know of input and output you have to jump into this loop and stay in it for a while to have uh, the input that is, you know, listening, reading, perhaps watching, you know, but not a huge fan of this, but but definitely listening and reading, uh, and then having an opportunity to speak. And if you stay in this loop for a while, uh, yes. uh, chances are that your language will improve, but not in a way that, you know, this is an instruction, you listen and you follow and you execute, but basically uh, the language will, like Chomsky says, iron itself, itself out, you know. Yeah, like, again, I'm you know, making and... parallels with my driving. You know, I, I have this now driving license. I can drive. All right, but right. because well, I drive, guys. but because I drive very rarely <laughs> right now, because I live uh in, in the middle of nowhere, and only once a week I get a chance to drive, you know, to the and every time it's like my first time, I know the rules, I know how to drive, and I even mm. have a paper to prove it, you know. <laughs> but no, it's not enough. I need to drive yeah. and I need to make yeah. decisions until, every second. Yeah. yeah, until it gets into your veins yeah. or once yeah, again, your yeah. spinal cord. Okay, let's call it a spinal So that, yeah, yeah. So that, you know, uh, then uh, it's just like, you know, just like breathing, right? I mean, yeah, to me right now, I mean, driving a car is like, okay, you know, I enter the car, 
and and I drive, but but uh, I'm not even aware of how well, I would say complicated. It used to be complicated, but now with you know these automatic transmission cars and everything, you know, all you need to do is to press gas and stop. You know, and... no, no, no. <laughs> but 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 uh, it's not so easy, of course, if you think about the context, right? Because you need to control what's happening uh, in front of you, behind you uh you know and everywhere around you so you need to know more or less and you, you need to adapt your speed to the context you know everything so these are also uh things that uh, that you do subconsciously you know yeah but the same with language you know you've learned these tenses you can do you know you can pass tests with flying colors but it doesn't mean that you can speak because every time you speak yes, i of mean course. of course if you okay speak about uh food and you've already you know memorized long lists of food maybe but the, when you have a conversation you don't know which way it will go and you have to make yeah. these decisions about choosing the right book of choosing the right you know whatever grammar that's why i like i like i like uh, our classes because they are spontaneous and uh you know they, they will put you in a situation where you have to kind of you know uh stand your ground you know where you have to uh, maneuver, you know, left and right, and 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 uh, get to some sort of a conclusion, you know, and and and, and I guess this is uh, beautiful about it, you know, and it's, it's it's as not even though this is a paradox, you know, because the, the conversations, the questions themselves are sort of unnatural. I mean, they don't happen in real life, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, not too often, at least. And uh, at the same time, uh, the result is pure. Uh, one hundred percent natural linguistic uh, production, you know, output. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That is, you know, and and this is the creativity, everything that you really need in, and and, and that is really useful in language, in language, right? In language. And you control the narrative. You, and you control the narrative exactly. Like, okay, so, only so what you had for breakfast last. Yeah. Weekend. Once again, yeah, exactly. It's, it's very important, Masha, to to remind everybody that uh, we are not about uh, retrospection. We are more about the projection. I call it. You know, so we don't talk about what happened to me or to anybody. You know, in the past, like last weekend, last summer. Well, or sometimes anywhere. I do. You know, from time to time, yeah. But but we are. If if the question is about you know what's the difference between let's say cowardice and shyness then you know you have to uh project right because you go into the unknown you haven't perhaps explored this problem before and now you have to confront it here live and and you have to say something right that that's going to make sense according to you right right all right so that's pretty much that's pretty much our show <laughs> i remember you wanted to 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 name it uh chin wagging or or <laughs> <laughs> such a lovely name it will it would take all responsibility off our shoulders because you know sometimes we get certain critiques that <laughs> you yeah, are the show is you don't know what you're talking about yeah. yeah show is pointless talk get serious how old are you um but chin wag would just you know yeah, chin -wag would, do you yeah, read the would, name would... of the show no? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and we have this thinking out loud, which is like thinking <gasps> is a serious activity. No? This is a serious, serious, a serious activity. activity. But I hope, I, I hope, guys, that uh, the show uh, is uh, also a bit, a bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, um, a bright spot in your life. Like you know, <laughs> it's not, it's not because we are, we are, Masha. I am serious when I answer whatever, or when, when you know, when we have all of these conversations are the, the, the you know uh i don't know how many hours we we spent having conversations a lot but you know i'm i'm always serious you know in a way whatever is the question you know and by serious i mean that you want to get down to the truth you know but whether we are capable of doing this is one question you know and second we may be doing it also laughing and joking around no problem right so uh, I guess that laughing and and having this sort of light approach to sometimes very serious questions uh, doesn't actually cancel you know us 
uh, being serious, right? I mean, yeah, I know you're all about this spiritual experience, but my expectations for listeners are quite low. You know, I just want to give people, I just want people to listen to something in English because I know it's important. Because look at us after a month, uh, a month's break, we are what? Handicapped. We are rusty. We are rusty. <laughs> yeah. I would say rusty. Yeah. Can't rusty. string a sentence together. Yeah, but uh, but you know it will come with practice. And it's the <laughs> same with our students. But I must tell you, uh, it's interesting that sometimes a break, like a total break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've noticed this. Does really gives some it, kind of a boost, you know? Yeah, yeah, and and uh, I know it from experience. People come back after a break. Mm -hmm after a month's break, two months break, or I know what, you know, and they actually perform better. Because I mean, their language is like, like, uh, simply better. Uh, well, the brain it's... does it. I think there's some science yeah. that it, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. just put everything into the right place where it should be. Yeah. 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 But uh, then again, it's, it's kind of, it's, it is, I believe, individual, right? But, but uh, yeah. it happens quite often. Quite often that after a break you come back stronger, and you you may think that oh, you know I haven't used my language for a while, you know it's going to be a disaster now. But uh, surprisingly, it's not. Surprisingly, it's not. Okay. All right. So, uh, Masha, I guess uh, I guess uh, we already uh, described our show. That was enough and... for first episode. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We know? need to remind so, people that the show is interactive. It means that you can leave us. Of course. Of course. Guys, I'll, I'll be serious for once. You know, There's a special link that you can find on our website. It's tolpodcast.com. So you click, you go to our website. And somewhere in the middle of it, there is a huge section called uh, voicemail. And you may actually leave us some comments, some, uh, you know, you can basically say hi, you know, and I know, uh, or or uh, say hi to uh, your mother-in-law, for example. And then, uh, of course, uh, preferably in English, right? And then uh, we'll play it on the next episode, basically. That's, that's if you're, you're one of these 37 people who listened to us while we were on a break, Please do. We want to hear from you. All right. So, uh, so uh, that's what is it? You know, let, let, you know it's uh, um, if you are an Instagram blogger, you you know these things that you don't just talk to people. You need to finish with a question so that you invite some interaction. So let's ask people a question like, "What is it for you? Is it a spiritual experience, <laughs> or it's just you know very down to earth? You know something I'm going, uh... to." Listen yeah, to I'm going. I'm going to Masha. Great, great uh, thing that you mentioned this. I'm going to ask about the spiritual experience in our <laughs> Spotify, um, um, whatever survey or 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 poll. Oh or there's there's a way devil. to interact. There's a way to interact with us on Spotify. If you are listening on Spotify, of course, or if you're listening on YouTube, uh, then or you just add a comment below. Why not? Uh, what's more, I guess um, when it comes to uh, the guest. Uh, selection uh nothing literally nothing stands in the way of you our listeners getting in touch with us and you're pretty much admitted like you know instantly right i mean yeah. there's no queue right now of people right now. waiting and you know so, so we'll have a recording in december or something no we just record and uh the very next uh you know uh, uh date that is the very next wednesday you're on the show, but but at the same time, uh, I also have my kind of uh, short list of people I'd like to hear here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not going to share it publicly, but there are basically people who I know from from uh, the past of my you know teaching career, which has been long, by the way. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to uh, have certain guests here. Hopefully, uh, I'll be able to convince them and have them on the show. For because they are all beautiful, uh, beautiful minds, you know, uh, that I'm sure would uh, make this show even better. You know? <laughs> all right. Uh, Masha, I, I'd like to say a big thank you to you at the end uh, for being here. Um, and uh, I'm the co-host. Yeah, what co-hosting. What do you have to thank me for? <laughs> 
Well, I don't know. You know, it's not so well, easy thank to you record, for co-hosting uh, this show. Then. All right. Wow. Thank you. Feels good. <laughs> All right. So, uh, but I guess it's over to you to say this. You know, do you remember that? Because you know, I I uh, totally you failed, forgot uh, your phrase. Yeah, My phrase is this. Phrase. Uh, this was another or the first in the season. Yeah, uh, yeah. You may improvise here. You see, this is the first. The episode first episode the... in season. Six. six, which is uh, according to Yendrik, not a good number, but let's see. Let's Sorry? prove him what wrong. Did you said that you don't like six. I don't like, I said sex. <laughs> did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, so, <laughs> I like, uh, I like, uh, Odd numbers, you know. I don't know why. That's why you know. Ah, even so numbers six is like good. Six, eight, yeah. No, oh, six actually, is not actually, good. Not, okay, it's not, not like, odd. Like, yeah. I like, I like odd years. Like twenty-three. Like this year is perfect. Twenty-two, not so good. You know, twenty-four. Yeah, it's. I know. I'm a bit superstitious. Okay, maybe, this guy right? is superstitious. Let's prove him wrong. Uh, season All six right. people just leave us voicemails. You know, come to the show and we'll prove him wrong. So this was the first episode of the Thinking Out Loud in season six. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. Stay tuned for the next episode with a guest. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.